All right, so this is a video uh, showing LaunchBox. This is a mobile version of LaunchBox, but LaunchBox running on the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5. This will work on any Chromebook uh, that actually supports Android apps. Um, you do need to be in developer mode. There are videos on how to do that on YouTube. And then you have to go to their website and download LaunchBox. So we will launch this by default. I mean, it looks all right, but there's things you can do to make it a little better. So here we are. I'm not going to do too much with emulation because I haven't really set it up right yet. Um, in fact, I didn't even plug in my um, thumb drive. In fact, speaking of that, well... Here's what it looks like. And you see the black levels working out very well with that OLED screen. So you set this up, uh, I believe there's a, up here, there's a change view, and uh, this is the wheel with details, and uh, you can actually download theme videos here, so there's that, and then there's view settings, which allow you to remove box art so it won't be in the way. Um, of the video. So, we have, I'm going to lower this a bit. <laughs> but yeah, that looks gorgeous on this screen. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of different systems you can, uh, load up you can do it off a usb drive i have it i'm going to eventually pause the video and plug it in and get it booted up properly so i can show you everything else but this is a cool little theme try to zoom in a little more So yeah, it does work. Um, when selecting a game, there's a pop-up dialogue asking if you want to play the game or change emulator settings and all that. On Android, that works with a controller. You can navigate through that and select things with a controller. But on Chrome OS, those dialogues don't work with a controller. So I had to set it so that it will just launch the game. And if I really want to change some of the settings, I uh, you know I then long hold the button and I can just navigate with the touch screen or with uh, the mouse um, if I want to adjust settings or whatever so but I have it set to just automatically launch the game so I don't have to be stuck with that and have to touch the screen or use the mouse or whatever You can also change the opacity, or the you know the background can be the brightness can be darkened a bit, so that it separates the video from the uh, the name of the system, so you can see it better. Um, it'd be nice if they just had like some kind of like uh, thing here, like maybe a wheel or a black. You know, some kind of thing here, and then they just took the video and kind of put it over here somewhere, or I don't know. But right now, the 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 banners are just hanging out over the video, and it it makes it can make it a little harder to see. Uh, 
I have not actually fully set this up yet. So I have the game set up. Not all the emulators are set up and working. Uh, the only thing I really have set up and working is Dreamcast. So I have a lot of work to do with this as far as uh, making sure I configure the emulators and even just download them and stuff because I haven't even downloaded the emulators yet. Um, or the cores in RetroArch. So. But yeah, it's looking good. Also, if you want to use, like, if you don't want to go into developer mode, that does require that you completely wipe the device. If you don't want to do that, there's other emulator front ends on the Play Store. A really good one is Dig. That one works well, and it has its themes. It's not every theme supports every system, and it looks a little funky sometimes. Still a really good-looking uh, front end. It's just this one, at least, the, the themes all match up with the, the systems are all accounted for and everything. PlayStation. Uh, I do have PS2 on this list, but the only good emulator for Android, uh, Aether SX2, I think it's called, is not supported because I believe the emulator doesn't support front ends right now. Hopefully they will eventually update it and it will work. But I do have PlayStation 2. I don't know how well it's going to work on this device. Uh, I haven't gotten it fully set up yet, but I will definitely do a PS2 video, whether it sucks or not. So we'll see. Should hopefully at least be able to play some 2D titles or something. But yeah. For now, it's just there and I can't do much with it except possibly launch the emulator. But we do have PSP here. And that will work. Go on over. Oh, that's all games. Okay, so that's basically all of that. But I'm gonna go and get the this thing set up with the USB drive, so I can have all my games, and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back now, and we got the USB drive hooked up right over here. It's on an SD card and an SD card reader. Uh, let me here's jump into the arcade thing. I don't know. Oh, I have downloaded everything. This stuff downloads fairly quickly. But, yeah, we have all this. Let's see if I can... Oh. Yeah, if you want to search, unfortunately, because the Android... Uh, the Chrome OS thing where I can't actually... Yeah. So, I'm going to search for Mortal Kombat. Oh, I can't even do that. And there we are. We have all the Mortal Kombat games. I don't think 4 is going to work. <laughs> um, let's... Yeah, it's going to tell me that uh, I need to configure the emulator, yada yada. And... Uh... So, which one do we have here? Let's see if we can... But I don't even think I have the core downloaded, actually. I don't have any cores downloaded. So you know what? I'll worry about that later. But, yeah, that's that's the thing if you want to search for it. I don't know if you can... Can I get out of that? Yes. All right. So it's a little finicky sometimes. But uh, I, I wish there was a way I could just 
advance. Let's see, is there a way to advance? No, it's going to keep bringing up that dialogue. All I want to do is, like, advance like a... No. No, there's no way to apparently advance, like... Huh. Yeah, I don't have any way to would actually just advance, like, to the next letter. Well, hopefully that can be taken care of, because right now I'd have to go through every single thing, or I'd have to use the U.S., or I'd have to use the search function, which requires a mouse and keyboard. And that's no different from, uh, from what's-a-face, um, dig. I can't actually advance and dig either. So I'd have to keep doing this, or and, and dig, I can't even search. So that sucks. <laughs> so, but this is not actually set up, so. But that's what it looks like. I believe you can download videos, but in this you have to pay to uh, download the videos. You have to pay for Emmy movies, and uh, that's the only way, apparently, to download videos. I don't know if you can add anything manually somehow. Maybe you can use another software, but that would have to be on, like, a PC or something. But this, you know, it takes up a lot of space anyway, so, you know. And you see it's downloading the uh, a lot of the stuff while I'm going through it. So, let me get back and go to Atari. And you see, it downloads everything. It's, it's not, you know, it's all fairly much the same. Um, and you can change up the views and everything here. Um, there's a uh, banner view. There's a lot of different uh, stuff. This is the one I like, but you can do the banner view. Uh, but there's no videos with the banner view, I believe. So, but they keep updating this, and that's good. It's a heck of a lot better than the first attempt they did at releasing this on uh, Android. It's just, there are some quirks when it comes to trying to run this on a Chromebook. Maybe they can hopefully actually factor in Chromebook support, too, and not just Android. Because there are certain things that don't work on a Chromebook that uh, do work on Android. And it makes it a little hard to use. Let me get out of here. And like I said, I mean, this is all fairly much the same stuff that you're looking at. All just box uh, banners and stuff. Hmm. Apparently not getting any box art. Oh, there we go. Yeah, these are XML files that I need to delete. <laughs> I thought I got them all, but I didn't. So I can launch some Dreamcast, though, because Dreamcast is actually working. So I was having some issues with... Uh, what's a face? Just using Redream, and I was having some lag issues, which is weird because... I didn't have those issues on lower-end hardware, so I don't know if that's just a one-time deal or if it's going to keep doing that or, you know, maybe I try a different emulator. And we have the widescreen hack enabled for uh, Crazy Taxi. But this hardware should be more than capable of running Dreamcast, so... So yeah, I do a little emulation in here. Nothing a lot, not a lot, because like I said, it's not all set up. Hopefully all the buttons are. I think I set the buttons up right. Yeah. So you see it's running smooth right now. 
I'm not sure if it was just like a one-time issue where the lag set in or if it's uh, gonna keep happening. Whoa, hey. Seems to be dropping frames all of a sudden. I'm not sure. Try um, the other emulator if that's an issue. Yeah, it's definitely uh, got some... Oh, God, there's input lag. It's definitely powerful enough. I just... There's some kind of issue where this emulator wants to act up. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I can't imagine that because the original Chromebook duet wasn't giving me issues there. But we'll see what, what uh, that's about. <laughs> But, yeah, so I'm going to set this up a little more. I just figured I'd show mostly uh, Launchbox running on, uh, on the Chromebook Duet. And Chromebooks in general, because I didn't see anything about this running on a Chromebook. But it is running on a Chromebook, so there it is. <laughs> Thank you for watching.